Hi everyone and welcome back to our quest system series in UE4. In the last episode, if you've been following us, we created the quest UI. So when we clicked on and interact with an NPC with a quest, it showed the quest they're holding and the details of that quest, such as the title and its text. In this episode, we're going to uh, cover the objective list and how to set objectives to certain quests. So that's what we're doing today. And uh, let's begin. So in my quest system folder here, I'm going to make a new folder and call it objectives. And inside this folder, we're first of all going to start off with an enumerator. So you go to blueprints and you add a new enumeration. If you don't know what enumerators are, um, you want to check out my enumeration video uh, where I explain a lot more clearer detail. But essentially, enumeration is a list of, uh, of types of things and an order of uh, set, uh, states okay, that are stored. Uh, objective types, that's what we call this one. So in enumerator, this list of values, I'm going to have the first value be location. Next value going to be a interact. The next one will be a collect and finally a kill so these uh, four types I sort of sat down and figured out what four types of objectives there are out there in the gaming uh, world really and there's always these sort of four so location one reach a certain location uh, that's pretty standard interact and this could be interacting with a certain NPC an item on the floor or a cogwheel or anything absolutely anything uh, so if you interact with an item or an NPC anything in the world this will trigger that objective collection allows you to collect a certain item or loot from enemies if you collect those things they could be pickups on the ground or things you get when you kill an enemy and killing is your objective is to kill like five of these or kill this character or whatever and most objectives could fill into one of these but if you can think of any more you can add them to this uh, it's not a big issue just add more to it so i'm going to save this and close this down the next one i'm going to add is in the blueprints i'm going to make a data structure and i'm going to call it objective data and objective data will be our data structure which contains all the information about objectives and what kind of information they contain. So the first objective type, uh, data I'm gonna store is the, type, uh, the text of the objective. So I'm gonna go into uh, description, and that's gonna be a type of a text. Uh, next one I'm gonna say is the objective type, so I'm gonna call it type. And then in the dropdown, you wanna type in that enumerator we just made. So objective types. So that would be our option to choose one of those four that we just made. Um, the next one I'm going to do is a boolean called is complete. And we'll need this to check whether or not we've completed all the objectives to tick off the whole entire quest as complete. So that will be a boolean, either true or false. And now some other ones. So the first one we're putting there is target. And this will be a type of an actor. So target will be used for certain things. So location, interact, collect and kill. So you maybe want to in, uh, reach a certain location. You use that target here. Interact with a certain thing. That would be the target that you're going to interact with. Collect. These things are the things that you're going to be collecting. And kill. The thing you're going to be killing. Okay. So that would be the target. And an actor type means absolutely anything in the world. So we can assign anything to that uh, value there. And then lastly we're going to have um, number. And that'll be the number of those targets we need to do. So if we needed to collect us like five coins, uh, coins would be the actor target, and the number will be five. And this would be simply an integer. Okay, that'll do for now. I think click on save, and we'll close this. So now we've got the objective data and types done. We can go back to our quests, in our quest folder, and you want to go to the parent quest, the overall parent, master parent quest. And in its variables, you want to add a variable called objectives. And the type is variable, you can find on the right hand side, you can choose a drop down here to say from boolean to those, that objective data we just made. 
data, objective data structure. And this is going to be an array. Now we want an array because it'll be a list of multiple objectives, usually. So we want to make it an array and then click compile. So if we want to add an objective to a quest, so if we go to our quest 001, we open it up and you'll see in the default settings for objectives it has zero array elements. We can click on the plus sign to add an objective, expand open, and here we can type in a value. So I'm going to put in here reach the elven ruins. Okay, and that's going to be a location type. It's not complete, and number won't be valid for this. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what we put for that. So I'm going to leave it at zero. Click compile, and now we're done. So that quest now has that objective. So the task now is to get to a display on the quest dialog. So when we interact with the NPC, we can see what objectives we need to do. So to accomplish this, we have to go to our quest UI folder. And in here, we first of all need to make a objective uh, mark uh, bit of, uh, so sorry, an objective sub widget for our quest dialog window. So go to user interface and open up a new widget blueprint. And I'm going to call this quest and quest objective item underscore UI. And in here, we're going to get rid of the canvas panel and put in a size box instead. And with the size box, I'm not going to determine the width. I'm just going to change the height to be, say, like 40, for example. And in there, I'm going to have a horizontal box. Now, the reason why I want a horizontal box is because I want to store like a little checkbox next to it and the text. So in my common section of my panels, I can drag a checkbox in to my horizontal box. And you'll see it appear there. And the text as well appear next to it with the text i'm going to change it to say so it fills the whole entire thing and i'm going to make it vertical align to the center like so and if i change the fill screen here to desired you can see the end result of what that looks like okay so now we've got this set up we need to make it so this text can change and this tick box can change so i'm going to click on the graph editor of this widget and add two variables I'm going to add the objective text, and that'll be a text type. And I'm going to add the is complete, which is a boolean, to it as well. So on here, we're going to tie the objective text to this text here. So click on the text block here. And in the details panel, you'll see content, text, text block, choose bind, and I'll click, sorry, click compile, choose bind, and you'll see objective text appear as one of the options. So now whatever that value becomes in this variable will now display as this text here. And this tick box here, we can change the unchecked here to bind to the is complete as well. So this whole thing is bound to variables. So how do we make it so we can access these variables and change them? Well, on the graph editor, we want to make objective text instance editable, so it can be changed by other things as well, and make it exposed on spawn. So when we create this text on the screen, we can edit it straight away. It is complete, however, we just want the instance editable. We don't need to expose it on the spawn. We can do, but you don't need to. And we're going to click complete, uh, compile. And that's it for this guy. We're going to close this and go back to our quest UI. So now our next job is to make this text block here change to show the list of objectives. So here I'm going to get rid of this text block. And inside the border there, I'm going to put in a scroll box. And this scroll box will fill the whole thing. So make sure you've got horizontal alignment set to fill in both. And inside here, we're going to make it so we can actually add stuff to it. Now to be able to do that, we need to make this scroll box a variable so we can actually edit it in code. To do that, I'm going to go over to the details panel and tick the is variable option up top and change the name of it to objective list. Now go into your graph editor. And you'll see the objective list now appears here. Okay, this is quite important. We'll need to use this later. 
So now we need to access the quest objective. So drag your quest out because that's where the objectives are. So choose get quest. Because previously we set up uh, quest to be able to uh, expose and spawn. So when we spawn the, uh, the widget, we can tell which quest this widget is showing. So this quest data is all we need. And from here we can get the objectives of that said quest. Like so. And from here we can do a for each loop. So for every single objective, we're going to do exactly the same thing. It will go around the loop, doing every single item in that array. So on that array, we're going to come out of the loop body and go create widget. And we're going to choose that objective one we just made. So quest objective item underscore UI. And because we made objective text expose on spawn, this shows up here. Now to get the value from the array element, because remember that's the data structure, we can right click on that and split it and you'll see that we now have access to the description which we can just tie directly straight into the objective text so now we've created the widget we now need to add it to our objective list so drag your objective list out choose get and then from here we can go add child choose this option plug it in and plug the return value from your create widget into the content of your add child so now we we'll add that widget that we just made into this panel which make it sharp on the screen so we're going to click compile now close this and click play and you can see here now i've entered uh open up the quest you can see the objective now appearing and this will now show every single objective that we have assigned to that quest so for example if we go back to that quest we can add another objective to the array and here this could be um, find uh, no talk to my brother oryx and this will be an interact because you'll want to talk to someone and we're going to click uh, compile and close this click play and talk and you can see now it makes the list appear and because it's a scroll box each one you add it can turn into a scroll box that you can scroll down okay um, and that's it for this episode in the next episode we're going to work on the accept button and making it add this quest to our quest log and then we're using that quest log to set active main quests and eventually get to the point where we can actually tick off these objectives as you complete them in the game so it's quite a cool little system, it's quite robust. Um, if you do have any questions or like to see any particular features, I know someone wants to do the chained objective, so uh, you have multiple objectives, but they only show when the previous one's been complete. We'll add that in at a later date. It's quite an advanced thing, so we'll add that in later. Um, I just want to make sure we get the basic functionality down. But if you have a suggestion for a video, please leave it in the comment below. And uh, and also share what stuff you've been making. It's quite cool to see what people have been making. And if you want to support me and see the next part of this video right now, you can head over to Patreon and click on the uh, click on the link to donate and support me. These people have been supporting me so far and it's been amazing. Thank you so much. If you donate, you can join our Discord and uh, get to watch videos early, plus exclusive videos and lots of one-to-one -one help, uh, from, not just for me, but from the rest of the Discord too. It's a good little growing community. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. See ya. Bye bye.